So we are literally starting off the first segment at the very beginning, as in the very historical beginning. So in this first segment, we look at several different articles um, from anywhere from the NPR to Smithsonian. Um, so, so look them up. But there's several different articles on the history of Valentine's Day, which, um, spoiler alert, isn't always what people think it is, right? So we think of it as the celebration of St. Valentine's. That makes us think of saints, which makes us think of Catholicism, which makes us think it's all clean and sanctified and beautiful and holy and great. And it's not, which I love. So um, so Valentine's Day has a, a, a history that's been here, there, and everywhere. But observances of what we would now call Valentine's Day started back in Rome. And if anybody knows anything about Rome, they sure loved their sex back then. So it was a very sexy, very fun, very spunky holiday. Um, now, obviously, it wasn't called St. Valentine's Day. They had different names for it. Um, so at first, the Romans celebrated um, to honor Juno. I'm going to just butcher these names. But Juno, Juno Fructifier, which is a, a queen and a Roman goddess. Um, and so it was a, as a fertility um, celebration. And then it became the Feast of Lupercalia, which, again, was um, to honor. Was the... nice. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, but it was to honor the god of fertility, um, Faunus. So um, these celebrations very early on were about love and hooking up and having fun and um, fertility. Um, and it wasn't until later that it got kind of, um, I would say, kind of formalized into greeting cards and chocolates and teddy bears. Um, so very, very interesting histories. I'm not going to go and review the entire history. I think you guys should all go um, read the articles yourselves because they're very fascinating, actually. But I think that in terms of the history, we all three have a lot to say on it. Um, and and I'm sure I'll put in plenty of my two cents. But one of you two put in about the jump in the articles between when it was all about sex to when it was all about green cards. So um, I think it was I think it was was it Nate that said that? Yeah. Um, yeah. I want I want to uh, start this segment off with that conversation because that was fascinating to me. Yeah, well, that's what I kind of noticed that um, in both articles, it kind of jumps from early Roman, you know, like skin whipping S and M orgies, and then we skip ahead to uh, uh, Pope Galatius, which sounds more like a, a transformer than a cleric, but. Uh, apparently, this pope around the end of the fifth century, or sorry, yeah, four ninety six, and he condemns this rowdy, drunken party, like because you know, as as Catholics are wont to do, you know, they have to stifle healthy human sexual activity. I mean, and then yeah. in both articles, we sort of skip from from there all the way to the early Enlightenment. And then when it sort of becomes this chocolates and cards kind of thing. And I'm like, I want to know how we got from, from skin whipping to cards. Like, There's I feel like good stuff in the middle. Yeah. There, I mean, there yeah. Something in the middle there. I mean, I realized there was, you know, plague and the dark ages and the hundred years war and all this other stuff. But I mean, people, people like to get down. So I feel, I feel like we're missing part of the story here. Yeah. I mean, in so much of this, we're missing the story. Right. Like, well, I'm sure we'll get a little bit more into it, but like the history of Valentine's Day is so messy and unclear. You've got so many different holidays that have kind of been like grafted onto each other. And this like semi ancient tradition is kind of just like trying to borrow older roots. It's like every time somebody sort of installs a new holiday, they're just sort of like grafting it onto the one that's already been there. So, you know, even the the histories that we do know and sort of the things that we kind of think we understand about the origins of this thing are just up in the air. I mean, the, the legends around St. Valentine's and some of the things that I'm sure the viewers might have heard in their, you know, kindergarten class or whatever else, even those things are, are not super verifiable. Right. They're very nebulous. No. Yeah. yeah so the the very beginning of the article says how the nobody knows who St. Valentine actually was, but apparently there were two different people that were executed on the same date. And that's the different origin thing. is, is 
these Romans were actually celebrating that this guy had been killed off. <laughs> now that <laughs> or that is well, the, that is the, a rough the, start for a holiday. Sorry, Laura. But the go holiday ahead. <laughs> already existed. It was kind of more like that was when the names were appropriated, and that oh, to me yeah. doesn't make any sense, right? So. Um, it makes sense to me that the holiday was sort of taken and adapted because cultural appropriation and diffusion happens all the time. And that's what I sure. really wanted to get the most out of this was that and an answer to Nate's question, like you take a holiday that one culture is celebrating, but then you you have this sort of um, Christian whitewashing that now needs to occur because there's standards now that people have to adhere to. Right. And so when when you would ask, like, well, what happened in between? It was like um, a lot of oppression of people's and super <laughs> yeah. suppression of people's sexualities and that their freedom of, of choice and expression. That's what happened in, in those years in between. Um, but, but I do get confused just like you two do with, um, so you have this holiday now that has very clearly Roman roots and it's celebrated in other cultures in different ways, as we're going to talk about in future sections, but you take it and you give it a saint's name. But the, the saints, like Nate said, that are connected to it are connected in such a odd sort of circumstantial way mm -hmm. that doesn't really make it make a lot of sense. Like ni neither one of them, it, it just doesn't, it's almost like, well, we need to do something with this holiday because people are celebrating it. So we need to take it and we need to right. Christianize it. So here's these guys that we killed on the same day. So. Well, let's, let's so just... that, that that'll work, right? Yeah, which <laughs> yeah. is I, which is why I desperately wish that we actually had a cohesive narrative that we could uh, like present to the world, so that we could get busy actually getting into the history of this thing. I'm not particularly concerned about it in one sense, but I just would love to be able to pull back the the bullshit mask that's been put on top of it. There is such a such a rich and lovely history of the Catholic Church taking indigenous and pagan holidays hmm. and traditions that they don't like and then just like attaching it to a dead saint so that hmm. now we in 2022 get to have all of these narratives about how Christianity has been the primary driving force behind all modern civilization for thousands of years mm. and that uh, Christians have always been persecuted and that when a Christian is martyred, it becomes way more important than whatever the hell else the, uh, the local population had been doing. And also just serves to feed into this uh, Christians will always and have always been persecuted narrative. Mm. And it's exhausting to me. Like, I would love to be able to dispel that with something a little bit more like neat and tidy than, well, well we've got these legends and we're not really sure, uh, but uh, there were some dudes and uh, there were some festivals and uh, now we're here. Yeah, there's some so chocolate. Yeah, and here's some chocolate. Have a greeting card. No, it's it's interesting that you talk about that about um the the main Christian holidays as appropriating other cultures holidays. And and it, and it kind of even though it's an atrocious thing that they did in terms of bastardizing those holidays and changing them, it also makes sense from their perspective why they would want to do that. But I went oh, yeah, um, like, and reading the this oppressor's article, point of view. Great oh, it job. totally is legit. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> right? But um so I went and I looked up Christian holidays. And any holiday that wasn't a result or, or a, an adaptation of a pagan holiday, I'd never heard of. Like yeah. they were various saint days <laughs> Ooh, yeah, or yeah. like, and, and I'll make sure that they're included in, in the show notes. But it was like, there was, there was a whole list of holidays, um, in, including saints days. And there's, there's one that's something like, um, uh, something about like pain, like causing yourself pain or suffering, like a suffering day or something like that. Um, I'm assuming it has something to do with, with Christ's suffering. Um, but the only holidays that I recognized were all appropriated. Like Chris, like you have Christmas, Easter, Valentine's mm -hmm. day. Right. And, um, and then you look at other religions and what I thought was interesting is they do do it to, to an extent, but like you look at Jewish holidays, for example, and they have a clear Jewish history. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right? And, and you look at Muslim holidays and they have a clear Muslim history and so on and so forth. And they don't tend as often to appropriate other um, cultures holidays. In fact, they tend to look down upon that. Like that, that tends to be very um, against the religious teachings. So I find it interesting that one of the ways that Christian 
tradition has survived and become so rich and so vibrant in our society is by stealing it from other other ho- um, cultures' holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and we'll talk more about that idea, I imagine, when we get to our final segment tonight. But I I think it's really important that we start to wrestle as a culture with the reality that our history books have been rewritten by Catholic priests for literally thousands of years at this stage. And that's uh, that's a terrifying, terrifying notion. Like as a uh, sex therapist and a lot of the things we talk about on secular sexuality is, uh, well, why do we all of a sudden have all of these new genders? And, uh, you know, ever since we started letting gays into the military, now everybody's gay. And the reality is, if you're wondering why there were no trans folks before 2004, it's because they've been in hiding and their histories have been destroyed over and mm-hmm. over and over. And mm-hmm. I, I think on a certain level, we generally kind of know that. But I, I can't help but feel like every time we talk about Easter and Christmas and now here we are looking at Valentine's Day without meaningfully understanding that that is an aspect of the tradition that we're celebrating we we tend to just continue to like christian whitewash over some like very meaningful i didn't think this phrase was going to come out of my mouth but some very meaningful genocides like these are important parts of human history that we don't really get into yeah it kind of you're kind of reminding me i think it's a napoleon quote and i'm paraphrasing but it's like it's something like i'm not afraid of how history will look at me because i'll be the one that writes it yeah and it's yeah, pretty sure. much. Kind of what's going yeah. on here. And then when Laura was talking about um, Christian holidays, and I was trying to think of one that wasn't Easter or Christmas. And I'm like, <laughs> right. the one that popped into my head was St. Crispin's Day. Which I've never and, heard of. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't the, think we'd do that here. <laughs> the only reason I know that is because I'm a history nerd. And that's the day that the Battle of Agincourt happened when, when the French were severely trounced. By, by the British and it was St. Crispin's Day and that that's the only other Christian holiday I can think of and I remember it for reasons having absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. Well, so, I mean, here in Evangelical Texas, uh, July 4th <laughs> Independence Day is kind of generally considered a Christian holiday. So there's, you know, there's that influence trying to uh, graft itself on to, to everything. I mean, the, the God virus might be retreating in a lot of ways, but it's still very much running rampant across our planet. Yeah, absolutely. It's this the one thing that Christianity has done so well is is to it's like the blob, right? It just it spreads across and then it amalgamates all these different cultural practices into its own and then and then claims that hey, we invented it and we're, yeah. what's more we're proud of it and how dare you try to take it away from us like we took it away from, uh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? No, but no. if you think about it, it totally makes sense because that is a survival tactic of that specific oh, religion. Yeah. And, and different religions have different survival tactics. But I mean, if we go back to, I know everybody's hating on Dawkins these days, and, and I get where I disagree with him as well, but that's one of the ways in which he makes a really good point is religion is a lot like a gene and it has, it's, it's programmed to survive. And Christianity specifically, it survives through rapid adaptation. Whereas other other religions in general stay pretty consistent over the years in terms of their beliefs and doctrines and practices. And Christianity is like left, right, up, down, and everywhere. Mm. And um, but it's it's an incredibly successful survival tactic for that specific religion. Yeah, and and uh Daryl Ray's book, The God Virus, uh paints a a pretty compelling picture of of what you guys are talking about is how it actually acts yeah. as a virus it performs as a disease and it's it's a disease of the mind kind of yeah. it i just yeah, and, and I keep, we'll I, adapt as need to as needed yeah yeah exactly i just i kind of wanted to be you guys were talking about how they where they were amalgamating all these traditions and i was like man to be a fly on the wall in that focus group in the holy sea where it's like <laughs> okay so we crucified these guys and um so right now there's young men with um skin whips going around whipping women because they think it makes them more fertile how do we get this to work for us ideas throwing it to <laughs> the floor just throwing it out there the women were like lined up around the block i mean this yeah. was not something i mean this was this was con- entirely consensual just so the audience knows 
Um, yeah, I was reading this wondering, like, this sounds sort of like misogynistic is, you know, these these lecherous young men going around with skin whips, whipping women. And I'm like, I'm like, well, this this, you know, this this sounds pretty, pretty, you know, Bronze Age. But the more I read about it, the more I was like, they it's were more like into a it. party. I mean, this is really good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. They were into it. And I am yeah. down. I am there for it. Absolutely. So it's it's funny you said that because and Christy made made a, a comment earlier about about Christianity and how it kind of changes and morphs our, our holidays and how we celebrate stuff. And one of the things I was thinking of is like, if Christianity hadn't gotten a hold of this holiday, if we were still or even gotten a hold of us, period, if, if Rome had not converted to Christianity, what would America be like today? Besides not being mm. America, what what would it be like today? And um, all things being equal and, and assuming we were still somehow created, right? Imagine if we were still celebrating based on Roman pagan practices. Like, can you imagine what Valentine's Day would look like today? Right. I was fucking like, Man, that, awesome that is what be. it would be. <laughs> that would yeah, be. I mean, as a sex therapist, I would be out of work. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of <laughs> oh, a I mean, nice I guess thing there's that. <laughs> you well, you, you could always go back yeah, to your youth pastor. The... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, classic. Well, we, we, we probably should move on. Uh, we do have some rather juicy topics, but mm -hmm. uh, final thoughts from the panel on the, the history of Valentine's Day? Just another case of uh, Christian whitewashing, and uh, you know, remember that mindfully, but uh, but have a good time. You know, it's uh, here we are in 2022. Wise yeah, words, I mean, Laura. I, I definitely gotta gotta echo Christie's like, if you want to embrace it, embrace it. You know, like have have fun and enjoy the holiday. But most holidays and most traditions and and rituals histories are really fascinating so if you don't like the the three articles or if you're not one that enjoys reading youtube it or something like look up the history of valentine's day because it's actually really quite interesting how many different loops and turns and twists and and how much intrigue is is in the the history of valentine's day yeah and and sort of like what you guys were saying um i think that with the rising amount of people that don't have a religion right the 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 nuns the the people who have no religious association and as that sort of wanes we're gonna have more opportunities to reclaim some of these holidays and shape them the way that we want to and i am there for that because uh you know some some good old whipping i'm i'm down I'm down for that i think we i think we ought to bring let's that back let's to make it happen let's use some sort of synthetic or cotton you know Right, right. Well, obviously, we're not going to skin a live goat. We'll, but this we'll is use tradition, Nate. Else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah this is the tradition that we just invented to put on top of somebody else's tradition. We've been doing and you need forever to that honor and respect that. Very well. Very well. well Appropriating we'll other cultures it. is my culture, Nate. <laughs> Ooh, that should be on a t shirt. Spoken like somewhere. an American. 